Surprise! It's a beautiful day, right? What we're going to talk about is uh, seed taking and um, I have a system that's not my system. I found it on the internet, like you buy everything else nowadays. But uh, I do have a little system up here, and it's real simple. It's a shoe organizer. You find those in garage sales. You find them, you know, when you go buy a new one if you need to. But it has different groups up here and the way that you decide what group goes where is that if you go out to botanicalinterest.com which is where I buy a lot of my seeds they have this uh, these forms out there on their website and also when you're saving seed they have this uh, worksheet The way I use this worksheet is as I'm planting my seed, I put in the variety. Because a lot of times you'll, you'll plant bell peppers, but you won't remember what kind of bell peppers you planted. And it may be a certain variety, and then it doesn't grow like the ones that you plant the next time around. So I, I always write down the variety when I plant it, whether, it's, whether I'm starting them indoors or outdoors, I keep track. If you keep track of that, you'll soon see a pattern. And then once I see the pattern of the ones that produces the best in Tennessee for me, then I save those seeds. And it's easy to take any kind of seed, like if you're dealing with bell peppers, for example, you take all those little seeds on the inside, just lay them out on a paper towel and let them drop. And it'll be real easy. Come in. So it, it is, it's, not, it's not hard to save seeds. What's hard is how to organize them. Once you get all these seeds, you've got just buckets of them and baskets and drawers and you have them scattered all over the place. And so what do you do with them and how do you find them? If you find seeds that are too old now because you didn't realize you have them stuck back in there. So this is done by weeks, basically. And you can take any calendar for the next year and start marking the calendar because what I've done on this or what they've done rather excuse me is um, if it's that you start them indoors like if you you know a lot of people start seeds indoors early then it tells you how many weeks out you can start seeds for example 12 weeks out starting them indoors if you were going to do transplanting the only plant that you can start 12 weeks in advance is artichoke so if you don't grow artichokes, don't plant anything else early because the rest of the, seed, the seeds, the, the plants won't be ready at the right time to plant. If you're going to plant uh, 10 weeks, these are 10 weeks before the last spring frost. Usually the last spring frost in this area is about the middle of April. This year was a little bit later. Play tricks on the nature does that. But you can go and find that information. Uh, from uh, out on the weather channels, or you can find that information under the Farmer's Almanac, any of those places like that, or just Google it in there and it'll come up and it'll ask you for your area, put in your zip code, it'll give you the last, what they predict is to be the last spring frost and the last, uh, I mean, first uh, uh, fall frost. Should be usually around the middle of October. Not necessarily, but you can kind of watch and, and see. So then I take, what I do is I take my calendar here for whatever year I'm going to be doing. This is 2016. And I'll go in there and I'll say, okay, 10 weeks before the last spring frost. If I think that's going to be the middle of April, which is usually what I use, but you can get exact dates, like I said, one before each year, <clears throat> then I'll count back the number of weeks. So I'll count back 12 weeks. I'll write on their artichoke. If I'm going to plant artichoke in the spring and transplant, then that's what I'll do. If it's 10 or 12 weeks, I'll go back. Those the things that you can plant to transplant would be eggplant, uh, kale, uh, rosemary. Those things are ones I use. I don't use any of the others, so the others on the list you can just ignore or you keep whatever. And I'll go ahead and I'll plant those seeds for that time in my little transplanting containers. I won't have anything else growing at that time. 
So you can just go through here and pick out the weeks, and that's how I have them group. This is group one, will be before the spring. You can't see the rest of it, I'll try to show you. But down here, if I get it up here, down here are the fall. So what you do is there's a lot of these that grow in the spring that you can plant directly outdoors in the fall. So once I've got them up here and I've used them, I move them down to where they belong in the fall. So I've got charts for all of this. I know it sounds very complex right now, but it's really easier. So just, just label your shoe pockets. <laughs> and if you want to use a box instead, I mean, there's nothing to say you can't use a, a cardboard box or uh, put your little dividers in a drawer or something. But this way, your seeds always, you know exactly when to plant because that was the other big question I had with all these seeds piled in there. I never knew when I was supposed to plant what. So this way, I know exactly when I'm supposed to plant it and which seeds will go. And these are all scattered around right now. But when I go to saving seeds, uh, which you can do, I have some down here to show you. The plant swap we had in April that I invite y'all to come. But this is hummingbird vine. So I'll put seeds in, in this, but I have some special little pockets that I was trying to find for them here. I think they're put down. I buy those little, little tiny, uh, well, I believe I took them out because there's, I buy this kind. I buy these little packets like this, and then I type on there what they are. Uh, okay, this now to be cantaloupe, pale spas jumbo, three weeks before the last frost, so one half inch deep and three inch pots at 75 degrees. So if I'm going to use these seeds, I've written down the information while it's fresh in my mind, and you can go out and find on, on all the packets or whatever, and I, and I put a little label on it, and then this is how I'm so, uh, so on almost any plant that you have out there, whatever the, uh, if, if you let the seed go to flower, as they call it, or bolt or whatever, like kale, for example, it'll flower. Then it'll have little seeds, and you can gather those. Cantaloupe, for example, and uh, uh, honeydew melon, stuff like that, they have these nice big seeds. Tomatoes have nice big seeds. Peppers, you just take them from that. The thing you got to remember is if you did not purchase the seed originally and plant your own, like if you buy tomatoes in the grocery store and you bring them home and you take the tomato and you say, oh, those are great seeds. I'm going to save those seeds and I'm going to plant for next year. A lot of those seeds are hybrids and hybrid seeds will not give you the same thing as you had in front of you at that time. They may revert back to the original seed that they used when they started crossing these to get that perfect cantaloupe or whatever. So your seeds may not end up, I mean your plants or fruit from them may not end up as nice as what you had uh, when you bought it at the grocery store. So that's why I always go back and there are a lot of heirloom uh, seed savers is one of uh, botanical interest. There's a lot of companies out there that do what I call heirloom and organic seeds. And that's usually what I get. Um, and I'm weeding through my seeds until I get all of mine replaced with those types of seeds since I've been doing this. But you just save them. Like I said, if you put a little label on it, I put on here, I'll say it's cantaloupe. And I always put the, the type, this is Hale's Best Jumbo. And it says uh, three weeks before the last frost. So one half inch deep and three inch pots at 75 degrees. I know exactly what to do with this whenever I pull it out and it says time for Kenwood to go out there. This makes your life a lot easier. You don't have to think about planting. Once you get this system in place, you don't have to think about when do I plant what. And then you can go on like your, your calendar for whatever year it is. And you can write down a few of the right I have on my purse uh, my little hand calendar here, and so I have, I've already started planting for fall, for example, I'll show you here. Uh, we're into July, and I've got here July the 9th, plant broccoli and cauliflower. So I know that it is now time for me to plant broccoli and cauliflower for the fall. So it's already in the ground, I'm planting those. It's ready, and they'll grow nice. Then on the 23rd, 
of July. I know to go out there and plant uh, cabbage, collards, and fennel. So those will go in the ground. That's the number of weeks in advance of the, of the fall frost. If the fall frost is the 15th of October, like it's supposed to be, <laughs> like it's pre being predicted to be. And sometimes that is uh, off a little bit, but not always. The 1st of August, uh, my little calendar here, I will have uh, beans, uh, Chinese cabbage, chives, garlic chives, turnips, carrots, and cauliflower again if I want to plant some more. On the 20th of, of August, I'll put in beets, bok choy, um, some more broccoli, carrots, and kale. Those have come in in the fall, so this gives you a chance to have another complete garden because a lot of the things that you planted for the summer will be through, like squash will be through. So you can plant this in that place. Um, I mean, if you do square foot gardening or raised bed gardening, well, for the first year. First year. This is easy then because then you know how many to put in each little square. And this way you, you can get the, the most production out of your space. And if your broccoli, are you starting that at, from a transplant or? No, these are seeds. Okay. These are planted direct in the fall. You just plant out direct. <coughs> and you have plenty of time. To, it'll come to head right at the perfect time if nature works that way. It doesn't keep raining on us. It'll come at the perfect time to make the heads before it gets too cold. It'll start, it will have cooled down enough that it won't bolt or anything on you like that. It'll make really nice big heads. Better actually than in the spring because it doesn't get as hot. And so, one of the things that I do as well is if you get medicine bottles and things like that that have the little uh, moisture absorbers in them, I save those and I stick them in each pocket so that there's no moisture accumulating those seeds. Because what I'll do is I'll, when I, I'm through with this fall planting and I'm not going to plant anymore, I'll roll this up, put it in this big plastic bag real tight, and stick in the freezer. Your seeds will last you 50 years if you freeze them in the freezer. So, yes. If you have a food saver vacuum sealer, would that be better? Oh, that would be better, yes. If you've got one of those, if you have a vacuum seal them, ever have, just so you keep the moisture out of them, that's the main thing. And uh, that's what I, I do with mine. If you've got seed left over from last year, you'll see on the seed vacuum, they want you to throw them away because they want you to buy more. But I don't throw any of my seed away. I've got some from 2010. I've got some seed, uh, like this cantaloupe, for example, still produces great that I've kept frozen. This is the first year they're out of the freezer. These are about 12 years old now, and they make beautiful cantaloupe. So don't throw your seed away if you keep them dry. That's the key thing. If you let them get moisture in them, then they will not produce well. But it, it just also know that they will be, every year you keep them, there's a little less chance that they will uh, germinate the way they should. So you just plant them few more. But there's no sense to keep spending your money for seed. You freeze that whole thing. I freeze the whole thing, yes. And then when you thaw it, you're not I would think when you thaw it. No, I keep it very dry. Yeah, I keep it very warm so it's dry out. I don't let the humidity. Because that's why I got these little humidity packets in here. I don't keep it out long. This is the longest it stays out. I go in there, I know which seed I'm going to get, and I pull them all out and stick it back in the freezer. Okay. It doesn't hang around. Okay, <laughs> so it's not like hanging on the back of the door all no. the time. <laughs> no, no, no. Okay. No, it, it's, it's tucked back away in the freezer. Okay. So it, it won't uh, generate moisture. But you can take, I mean, you don't have to use these, but these are neat. They fit in the pockets real well. But if I buy them someplace else sometimes, like, you know, if I find somebody who shares with me and it's a bigger packet, it doesn't matter. Where do you find those? These little packets here, you can get them at any of the hobby stores. Little hobby stores. So when I've got... You're raising your seeds in a, in a big bag. When do you take them out and put them in your organizer? Or do you well, they stay, they stay organized all the time. What I do is, like, in the spring, okay, um, Artichokes, the only time you plant those in early spring if you're going to transplant. That one would stay in this pocket because it, I know it's going to stay there. But what if you had saved those seeds? Would they be in the freezer? Do what? 
if you'd saved your artichoke seeds, would they be in the freezer? Yeah, they'll be in the freezer in one of these little packets like this. this so like why do you take them out of the freezer and put them in your organizer? Well, they'll go in the organizer. That's what I'm saying. And then you put the organizer in the freezer. The whole organizer. Okay, thank the you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah, uh, asparagus is another one that would be 12 weeks out. So it's in the little packet. And it's got a little information on there, what type it is. It's Martha Washington, so one quarter inch deep and 70 to 80 degree soil. 60 to 90 days before the last frost. So see, you can, once you put your information on your little seed packets, you don't have to think about it anymore. And then you put them in the number of weeks out. Now, a lot of these that are in the spring get moved to the fall. Once I've planted them and I look at my fall of sowing, where I'm sowing outdoors, for the fall, the last summer fall sowing guide, then I'll look on that and 12 to 14 weeks out, okay, Brussels sprouts and parsley. That's what we're doing here. But if you're interested in flowers and want to know how and when to sow your flower seeds, they also have that on the same site and it's it's part of these guides. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you, um, if you just start passing around, I think I have enough. I got 10 of them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. 8, 9, 10. It'd be three out of your group if, if you can share. And I can go make you some more for the rest of them. If you'll share with everybody to make sure that um, these ladies get some and then I'll make some for you guys. If that will work for you. If y'all are all together, are y'all all together? Yes. Okay. Yeah, we're all together. Yeah. And if you'll hand these out. And then here's the late, late summer. That gives you, gives you all year long when to plant. And so you just make your little pockets accordingly. I think you guys And you can, if you can look at yeah, the start saying you're in the next Oh. Either that or I can make some once I get back here. Oh, oh okay. So uh, now you know exactly which, which, which plants get planted at, during which week. So that makes sense. Now the thing I'm going to give you now is called your indoor seed starting worksheet. And like I said, if you start seeding indoors, you might want to write this down. But I also use this for planting outside. I will write down when I direct plant and what date it was and uh, what type of plant, like if it's a camo, if it's a hell's jumbo, hell's jumbo, then I'll write that on there. And that way I know what I'm planting. Uh, here we go. We'll get one of these worksheets. That way you can keep track of what produces the best for you. That way if you see that that particular plant variety produces real well for you here in Tennessee, then what you'll do is you know that those are the seeds you want to save. If you have a plant that doesn't produce well for you, there's no sense to save the seed because that's, that's, not, that's a failure. You don't want to do that. And uh, so this is how I go about saving seeds, whether it's for, uh, this is a rose of shell, double pink blood. You can find the little seeds on those. Uh, Marigolds, black eyed Susans, I have all of those when they go to seed in my yard. I'll go out and I'll gather up seeds and I'll share them with somebody else. In the Master Gardener group, that's growing something I want, I'll give them something they want. And you can swap around and save yourself a lot of money that way. This, this saves you a lot of money on buying seed too because we have a tendency, because we love to garden, to buy way too much stuff. <laughs> and have too many seeds. And if you don't take care of those seeds, they will not do as well for you. And uh, so you're just wasting your money and seeds are beginning to get very expensive and will continue to get more expensive as some this time goes on. So um, do you have any questions, anybody? Yeah, can you talk specifically about actually saving the seed from the, like uh, for instance, to get the seeds out of the tomato, What's the process of doing that and drying it or well, it? Well, the process is pretty 
much the same for all of them, but there's so many different varieties that you can Okay, <clears throat> onions, for example, I'm gonna use onions because you have to wait for the onion to, to get that big bulb at the top that it gets. It has those little tiny white things on it. If you ever seen an onion go to flower, as they call it, the plant has to go to flower, usually. Uh, except if it's a flower, of course, it's already flowering. But an onion, for example, will have these little white dots all over the top of it in a, in a bulb type thing. So you take those and put them on and dry them. There's a little black seed inside. So you have to pop them apart, you know, and, and take that little black seed out. Um, some plants, uh, I was trying to think of, like cantaloupe and, and cucumbers and all that are easy. You see the seed and beans are the same way. Yeah, I mean, that yeah, and beans are the same way. Right. So you just take those out and dry them. Uh, you, you can lay them out on a table or something like that. Some people say you try to dry them in the microwave. I don't think that works because that mess is a hydrator. So um, extreme. When you add heat to them uh, like that, um, it, it does change them and they don't work as well. You have to dry them naturally like they would in nature. Do you put them outside or keep them in your house? You can, you can well, if you put them outside, the birds might get them or a screen in porch. Well, if you got the screen in porch, yeah, just put them on the table on a napkin. I, I use paper towels. I'll use two or three layers of paper towels. I'll put my seed on there. I'll wait. Sometimes it takes two or three weeks. And you can kind of feel them. Peppers are the same way, hot peppers, whatever. I say uh, red pepper seeds all the time because I use them on pizzas and stuff like that. Uh, you, you can grind up the, the red pepper seeds then and, and make cayenne peppers. I mean, that's just how they make that, that you buy in the grocery store and it's very expensive. So you can take your seed, you don't have to leave them. I mean, if you're going to use them for growing, then yes, leave them. But you can take those seeds and, and grind them up and make the herbs that they sell you grocery store. And that'll save you a lot of money as well. But yeah, most of them you just lay them out on paper town. But if you're not sure, you can find that on the internet real easily because there's so many different ways the seeds come in their pods. And so there's, a, there's several different ways you can do them. And there's not really a right or wrong way as long as you're getting the results that you're looking for. Um, like tomatoes, peppers, uh, squash, cucumbers, cantaloupe, all of those, you just take the seeds out of the fruit itself, lay them on paper towels. You rinse them off? Or no, you don't have to rinse them off. Well, they, like stuff. It, but when they come <laughs> off, that dries, that dries and goes away. Okay. Yeah, so no, you don't have to spend time rinsing them and stuff like that. About how long do you think that you leave them out? Like on a paper towels? It depends on the size of the seed. It depends on the size of the size of the seed, but three weeks a month sometimes if they're real big. Um, you know, garlic, for example, comes in a bulb, so you dry that by hanging it up. Dill seed, for example, dill when you're growing dill, has little tiny brown seeds all over it. Once it goes to flower, then you just cut it and then hang it up. Uh, I hang them up by string. I've got a ton of it in my greenhouse now. Those are a little nifty to get the seeds out, <laughs> a little harder. But what I found, the easiest way to do that is I take a big uh, bucket and um, I just, as they're dry, I just start shaking my deal and all the seeds fall in the bucket. It's a clean bucket. And then when I'm through, I just dump them into a bag. Or you can put them in a paper bag. I use a paper bag. Yeah, a lot of people use a paper bag. Those types of same thing with the onion. Once that onion gets there, you can shake those onions and that seed, which are really tiny. Some of the seeds are so tiny you can't hardly see them. So it just depends on the particular one, but you can find it on the internet real easy. But it'll save you a lot of money if you find something that grows really well for you. And so some of them are obtaining seed that or from last year from Timbuktu someplace, you know. And They'll put them in the packet, that's this year's seed, but they are really not this year's seed. That's why it's best to find that variety to keep them yourself. So I always look at the credentials of a particular seed company. Uh, like I said, I, Botanical Interest does probably the nicest seed packet. And not all of mine are from there, but for example, this is one of their seed packets for stevia. 
And what I like about what they do is they'll tell you it's an heirloom, tell you if it's an annual or premium, and they'll say transplant the last spring frost. But on the back of it, the thing I really like is they have this little tab here that you can actually cut out if you want to. I've started using those and gluing them on my packets. It'll say days to germinate, 7 to 21, seed depth, 1 8, or barely covered, seed spacing, 18 inches, row spacing, thinning, not necessary. And it says um, on here, when to sow outside. It tells you how many weeks in advance. A lot of the seed packets don't tell you that. They don't tell you anything. They just, here's your seed. And um, it also tells you um, any special germinating instructions. For example, this seed will not germinate if it's not at least 70 to 75 degrees. Now, in my greenhouse, which I have just a small greenhouse, um, it's a 12 by 16, and I, trans I put a lot of plants in and transplant out in the spring. But I have these uh, mats down on the shelving, and I can regulate the temperature. So I know that if I put it set it for 70, 75 degrees on that row, and all these plants will germinate, and all these seeds will germinate. And so I'm pretty safe. But uh, if you don't have that, you can use a little, they've got thermometers out there that you can stick down in your soil. That will test the soil temperature. Sometimes that's the reason your seeds don't germinate, is that you put them in the wrong temperature. The other reason seeds don't germinate is some need white and some do not. Some will not germinate in white. You need them. They, they only germinate in the dark. Can anybody tell me a real popular flower that will only germinate in the dark? Anybody have any Pansies. <coughs> so if, if you're trying to, to plant seeds and, and you go in there and you Set it in front of a window thinking it's going to get beautiful sunlight and it's going to be, it won't drop that. You're going to sit there and never do anything. <laughs> but if you're taking that and put it in the dark, it would have, I believe I've got the right hand. So there's, that, there's a particular things that you need to know about the seeds before you uh, start planting them out in the gardens or, or getting them ready to transplant. So the more information you can gather on how to germinate that seed, the better production you will have, the less seeds you will need to use. And so you can say, I mean, a seed packet may last me three or four years because of the number of seeds that are in there. There's just me in a growing course, I'm not going to grow. And that <coughs> <be accounting. laughs> So, you know, same thing with flowers. If you go on that website, they have all the same information on almost every flower that is imaginable. And if you're into flower growing, They'll tell you exactly how to do that as well. So um, it's uh, 20 to 10. If anybody has more questions, I'll be back You have more questions? It's the same as you can. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> anybody else? Is there anything else we didn't cover that you'd like to know? No. I have uh, I had some heirloom tomatoes that I saved. And I researched how to save them. And I've read that. They needed to go through a process, and like not every seed has to do this, but the tomato. But what I read is to put them in some water. I think it was like up until for seven days or something like that, until like a little bit of mold grew on top of the water, mm -hmm. and then to remove the seeds and spread them um, on the paper towels. And it 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 saved a different kind of seed than just raw tomato seed with the, um, it got all of that uh, gel off of it and, and then the seeds when they dried they were like um, like they come out of the packet right. soft and right. brown fuzzy seeds <laughs> right. so that they were ready do you have to go through that process I think or? it's probably a good idea if you don't want to have it that way but like not every seed is it's not required to do every seed that way. So, I mean, you know, I'm sure our forefathers never sat around and soaked their seed in you know, buckets of water and say, you know, it depends on the seed a lot of time. Um, um, and, you know, you, you take a chance and you 
so you like that and you can roll on that, but you might lose some of your seed. I, I just find it's easier. I just kind of wipe mine off, paper towel, lay them out there, stretch them out there, and give them two or three weeks, and then <coughs> it doesn't mean it's right, but it works for me. I think you have to look on the internet, check out every seed that you're trying to save, and make sure that you're doing it the way they recommend it, because they're probably more knowledgeable than I am. But um, on the whole, I found it works just fine doing it that way uh, for this area. You know, it depends on what area you live in. You know, East Tennessee is different from West Tennessee and Middle Tennessee. So, you know, uh, but. Yeah, the soil is quite a bit different too. Yeah, the soils are different and things like that. So that's why I said you have to really um, kind of study and make that use that chart of what you're planting so that you can see if the seeds that you're using are working for you. Just because it says it's a broccoli rock, plant, you know, that your seed, broccoli seed doesn't mean that that particular broccoli variety will grow the best here in Middle Tennessee. And that's a lot of the things that people do is that they just, oh, that's broccoli on the planet. But they don't realize that there's so many different varieties and a lot of them won't grow here, but some of them will grow great. Same thing with almost every seed. You have to find the ones that's closest to the native, you know, native to the area that you're living in. Yes? Um, you know how that farmer's almanac will have gardening according to the name or something? Gardening, gar gardening according to the name? Yes, and yes. Do I, I do pay attention to that? Yes, I do. I do garden by the name. Yes, I okay. do plant my seeds by the name. Uh, my grandfather always planted inside the cancer, and he always had a beautiful garden. It, it makes a difference. I, I know people think that that's a little. Like I just that. wonder because <laughs> you gave us the chart that you know this much before frost or that much, so you could guesstimate. But then there's also the right. Then you go back. I go back in and look at the moon. Yes, that's. I think it makes a difference. Personally. That's why I have these written down to be certain times, as I've already looked to see what uh, the moon says to do. Right. <laughs> and so that's why I knew what days to put where. Not everyone puts much uh, you know, emphasis on that, but Signs, I do. <laughs> I, th I think it makes a difference. Well, I came to the class last week on garden signs. I thought that's what it was going to be about, but it was oh. painting signs. <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, wait, yeah, you can go, and I don't think the charge of the on that, I Farmers on that is not charged. I mean, you can go in there and you can look for the chart and print it off, which is what I put on my wall okay. and, and keep it there. So if I'm running out the door and I decide I get this wild thing to go and plant this because I have a little space and I'm like, uh oh, this is not the right time back in there, put the seat back <laughs> and wait another week or whatever it takes because it does make a difference, especially, I, I don't know, especially here. It didn't make as much difference when I lived in Florida as it does here because of the weather difference. You know, you broke anything about any time down in Florida just about, but because the weather is always so good. But that's why I keep this calendar. This takes a little work. This is a little work to start with to get it organized. But once it's organized and you understand your little system, <coughs> and the system is explained <coughs> in technical interest so that you can, you know, see exactly how it's done. I believe that's where they have it. But um, I just group them together. I put these little labels in here. I make these on the computer. <coughs> you can make these with just little cards. And you, know, you print them out and, and then put them in there. And so I, I pencil in the, the, the last frost date here so that I know, you know, the weeks. This would, be, this would have been uh, February the 23rd through March the 9th. Planted. And I go back and look at the moon and see if it's okay then. And then I'll plant it during that week or during that time frame. So all of them are done. They, I have down here in uh, four to six weeks before the last fall frost will be September the 9th through the uh, 21st. So I go to the many signs and see what it says to plant during that time. And I used to have a you know, people who visit my garden say it's always really great looking. I assume it is. <laughs> but um, anything else I can help you with?